Welcome to Electro Online. Now it's time for an example. We're going to try to determine the amplitude of the particle once it makes it through the barrier, assuming it can make it through the barrier. We say that the particle is an electron. It has an initial energy of one electron volts and it's trying to make it through a barrier of two electron volts. The barrier has a width of 500 picometers, which is about a half a nanometer. All right, let's see. Here's our simplified equation, the one that we derived in the previous video. Let's go ahead and use this. So first of all, let's plug in what we know. So we know that the transmission coefficient, which is what we're going to need in order to find the amplitude on the other side of the barrier using this equation right here. So we're going to do it in terms of the amplitude on the left side of the barrier. So this is approximately equal to 16 times the ratio. That would be one over two one half times one minus one over two. Notice that even though the units, electron volts, are not the standard units, since we're taking the ratio, it doesn't matter. We can just go ahead and use electron volts rather than using um, uh, uh, joules. We don't have to convert to joules. And then over here we have e to the minus two times alpha times l. So we're going to leave this blank for now, and l is going to be 500 times 10 to the minus 12. All right, so what is alpha? Well, alpha is obtained here, and so we need to plug in some values to see what that's equal to. So we have alpha is equal to the square root of two times the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Then the difference in the energy, so we have two electron volts minus one electron volt, so the difference is one electron volt, but of course here we have to make the conversion to joules, so we have 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. Okay, you need to put all that underneath the radical, and then we divide that by h bar, which means that it's equal to h, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, divided by 2 pi. So when we divide by 2 pi in the denominator, that then comes to the numerator. All right, I'm looking for a calculator. So let's see what, the, uh, what that's equal to. So we have 2 times 9.11 e to the 31 minus. And uh, let's take the square root of that. We multiply that times 2 pi, so times 2 times pi, and then we divide that by Planck's constant, 6.626 e to the 34 minus, and convert to that, so we have 5.123 times 10 to the 9th. So it would be, let's put in here, 5.123 times 10 to the 9th. All right. So when we multiply this together, let's see here, five times this, well, that does indeed look like it's about two and a half or three, which classifies or at least says, yes, that's large enough to be used in this fashion. All right, so now let's go ahead and work this out. So the transmission coefficient is approximately equal to one half times one half, that's a quarter times 16, which is four times e to the minus two times four. So let's go ahead and do that, times 500 e to the 12 minus, the transmission coefficient is approximately equal to 4 times e to the minus 5.123. So notice that's a large enough number to make this approximate equation valid. So now we use that as the exponent and times 4. So here we have the transmission coefficient is approximately equal to 0 0.0238. So this transmission coefficient now gives us an indication of what the amplitude is going to be of the particle once it makes it through the barrier. So let's go ahead and calculate that now. The, ampli the amplitude of the oscillations in region 3 is going to be equal to the square root of t, which is 0 0.0238 times the amplitude on the left side of the barrier. So let's go ahead and take the square root of that, which means that the amplitude of the particle on the right side of the barrier is going to be 0 0.154 
times the amplitude of the par particle on the left side of the barrier. So the amplitude is dropped to about 15% of the amplitude on the left side. The energy is going to be a, a, the, if of term, the energy is going to be a function of the square root of that, and so that's why we need to take the square root of the transmission coefficient to get the relative amplitudes. So that's how we do that. That's a simplified example, but it gives us a good feel of how to actually use these equations. Now, of course, we're going to see whether or not there's a significant difference by using the approximate equation or using that original equation that we saw on the board a few videos ago. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll now do the same problem, but we'll do it with the original equation to see if it makes a significant difference in the actual outcome of the answer. And that's how it's done.